Thank you. Good afternoon, Representative Plummer, Senator Mason, distinguished and honorable members of the Committee on Criminal Justice and Public Safety. I am State Representative Ben Chipman from District 119 in Portland, and I'm here to present LD 750, an act to decriminalize possession of six or fewer marijuana plants. I am proud to sponsor this bill as a request because it is my fundamental belief that people who use marijuana for personal use on a recreational basis are not criminals. Under current state law, we allow for possession of up to two and a half ounces of marijuana uh, to be a civil infraction where the penalty is just a fine, it's not arrestable, there's no jail time, and there's no criminal record. But we have zero tolerance when it comes to plants, forcing marijuana consumers into the black market in order to obtain the recreational substance of their choice. Marijuana is far safer than alcohol and most legal substances. In fact, it's impossible to overdose on marijuana, and there is not one recorded death from consumption of marijuana in the history of mankind, compared to thousands of deaths every year from the use of alcohol and other legal substances. You will hear from Mr. McKinney of the Maine Drug Enforcement Administration, and with all due respect to Mr. McKinney, I'm not saying this to, um, to put him down or anything. I have utmost respect for him. Uh, but he will state later in his testimony that each plant can yield uh, up to two pounds of marijuana. And, and I would submit that these estimates are uh, quite a bit above um, the average amount and uh, that you can cite a study to back up any claim. Um, however, the estimates that I have heard are much, much lower than that. Uh, and I also would uh, state that you're going to hear testimony later on that this bill and a similar bill, which we're also going to hear today, LD-754, would make Maine the state with the highest amounts allowed for possession. And I would submit that Maine has been first on a lot of things um, and that it's, should not, we should not be so concerned with other, st other states are doing. Uh, we should do what's best for Maine and what's best for our state. Uh, in conclusion, um, I just do not think that it's reasonable to allow two and a half ounces to be a civil infraction, um, but having zero tolerance for plants and forcing consumers to the black market. Uh, this bill would allow people who use small amounts of marijuana for their own use to grow up to six plants on their own property for their own use. Uh, it doesn't uh, uh, send a bad message because we're not making marijuana legal, we're rather just uh, taking it out of the criminal element, making it a, a, a fine, it's a civil infraction. Um, and I'll take any questions that you have at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Any questions from the committee? None. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, is there any uh, co-sponsors who wish to speak to this bill? Representative Harville. I'm getting used to these reading glasses, so bear with me. Senator Mason, representatives, distinguished members of the uh, Criminal and Public Safety Committee, I'm here to speak in favor of LD50. And I'm going to start by saying this. Het Krieg is zu Ende. The war is over in relation to marijuana prohibition in this state and in this country. And it is paramount for us to find a way to surrender which does not leave us with unintended consequences that are worse than those that we face today. As the good representative has earlier said, people can obtain up to two and a half ounces. How do they get them? They can't get it by growing, so you force them onto the black market. We've been fighting this war for 60 or 70 years now, spent trillions of dollars on it, locked up people whose basic crime is that they smoke the weed, something that, as he stated, I didn't even know this, can't kill you. You'll go to sleep first. This is not a defense of marijuana as, a, as something that people should or shouldn't use. I'm of, of the opinion, actually, that it tends to make you stupid and lazy. It's not my drug of recreational choice. That said, we're in a situation where we're trying to fight this in an economic way that is absolutely unfeasible. Because we refuse, we've refused as a society, and are going to continue to refuse, to take action upon use in the way that you would have to to win any such war. We're not going to build pot jails. We're not going to pour even more millions into this to lock people up. So that means that we've decided to fight supply. So now we're into the issue of how they decided to fight prohibition. Everybody knew where the speakeasy was in town, but, ah, you know, people drank, we'll leave them alone. We're going to catch the guy bringing the hooch. Well, why is he bringing the hooch? Because there's people in the speakeasy. I live in Fr Franklin County. There are thousands of acres of clear cuts, hundreds of miles of wood roads, double-digit inflation, and a plant someone can make $1,000 on. 
if this combination didn't find itself, we should have to give these people up to some kind of psychological survey. I have spent a lot of time a couple years ago actually even looking at legalization. And I've come down on the fact that I don't think that legalization is actually an avenue that, that we can take for largely because it, oh, it's federal contraband. It also puts the state in charge of something, and I'm of the opinion that we haven't run any of our drug problems all that particularly that well. Um, so a step to allowing people just to have a number of plants, and this one says six. I'm not sure that that's the number we want to settle upon. Um, but we do need to take some, de some steps to, to, to end our ludicrous conflict and this ludicrous uh, uh, pursuit of, of ending this war on drugs because it cannot possibly be won the way it's being fought. You cannot, people don't smuggle a product that no one wants and do it very long unless they've got a lot of money or they're insane. That's not how it works. Supply and demand exist within the drug conflict as well. And if you're unwilling to attack demand, you can't attack supply. I also spend a lot of time talking to officers in my particular community, pretty much off the record. Here's a classic example, particularly a neighbor of mine. Uh, he was actually went to ask him for his vote last year, found out he was in jail <laughs> for uh, uh, tr marijuana trafficking. And I started talking to some of the officers about the guy. And he said, you know, he's been on our radar for 30 years. And, you know, I'd heard the name around. <coughs> so you have a situation for three decades, a guy is on someone's radar, and they can't even get him. This is another piece of this. Law enforcement, when you're down at the, it's been my opinion, and this is once again my opinion in my conversations with law enforcement in my area, that when you get down to the beat cop level, they think it's ridiculous. Now, as you step up the ladder to where those fighting this are receiving a massive amount of federal funds, their commitment gets a lot stronger. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not in any prohibition because self-interest governs all kinds of aspects of lives, but I do not believe that you can perp uh, entirely dismiss the fact that at the upper levels, a lot of people are making money fighting this or attempting to fight it. And so I think that this is a first step on allowing people just to have a couple, uh, two to six, somewhere in there. Uh, like I said, I'm not sold on the six plants. And that you start to say, we start to take a hard look at how we're doing this and step away and say, you know, we're not going to win this war. It's not possible the way we're fighting it. So let's get a little dose of reality here. And I'm willing to take any questions. And it better be some. Thank you, Representative Burns. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Representative. How many line officers have you surveyed on this matter? Uh, in my community? At oh, least. Period. How many line officers have you surveyed? You said you've talked to a lot of them. I, I believe I said I actually. I, I actually, Representative, I believe I said I talked to those officers in my community. And within my community, uh, eight. That was the total of your surveys? It's, it's like I said, it's my opinion, my, my town. Any other questions for Representative Harville? Senator Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, not disputing or disputing or arguing the single thing you said, but how are you going to how would we deal with the federal prohibition against growing marijuana? I think they compass. Uh, you know, it's, it's an issue. It's going to be an issue whether you legalize it or you. Uh, if you attempted to legalize it, it's going to, it's an issue that we're facing with medicinal issues as well. Um, I think that at the federal level that they would be far more, I, if I'm not mistaken, I actually think Alaska has, a, a, has approached this in, in a similar manner, but um, you could probably correct me on that, but I think that they would be far more relevant to allow this direction than they would be any type of uh, um, legalization. Uh, let me say something else too. My, my wife is from the Netherlands and I lived there for four and a half years and that's probably another reason why I don't really come down on legalization. They've had some struggles with it there. You know, whether they're going to allow you to, to decriminalize it, they've obviously allowed us to have two and a half ounces. So there's been some leeway that they've given states there uh, that outside of outright legalization. The Obama administration on medicinal marijuana more or less has signaled a hands off. There is some movement in this direction at the federal level on something outside of outright legalization that they may be able to allow states to walk down. You know, if they want to put the hammer down, then you are into an issue between federal and states' rights. 
I, I don't disagree with you. I think it's a, that's why I tend to favor this, this approach as a method rather than straight legalization. Good afternoon, Chairman Mason, Chairman Plummer, and honorable members of the Joint Standing Committee on Criminal Justice and Public Safety. I am Representative Rich Sebra. I represent the uh, 101st District uh, in the legislature, in the House, the towns of Casco, Naples, and Poland, well, part of Poland anyway. And I stand before you as a co-sponsor and in favor of LD750, uh, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I, um, I believe uh, being consistent from, from where I stand, uh, limited government is uh, important to me. I think um, when we have laws that allow, that have decriminalized currently two and a half ounces, but yet the plants are illegal, um, I think that's not consistent, and I think we need to get uh, both sides of that um, consistent with each other. I think um, it, it's not particularly my personal issue. Marijuana is not my issue. But when I look at other issues where uh, the senator asked um, the question about the federal government, I think when you look at these issues, uh, I think as a state we have a right to regulate what's going on within our state and the federal government uh, shouldn't factor into those decisions since we've decriminalized up to, uh, it used to be one and a half, and, uh, one and a quarter, and now it's two and a half ounces. I think the plants uh, would be consistent with that. Um, I've also, uh, I'm going to have to head out, but I've also co-sponsored, and, and because you're going to hear it next, is a 754, which would ch change the two and a half to five ounces. I think that's reasonable, especially uh, with people who may be using it medicinally but outside of the system. I, I think the idea is to make less people criminals. Um, it, would, it would free up the system and uh, unclog the criminal justice system that we have. And I, uh, I believe in uh, individual freedom and, and rights. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of me in the next couple of months on the Second Amendment issues. And I, I believe in those issues for the same reason. I believe. Uh, the government that leaves people alone is a better government. That's just where I am. 